welcome to Defan uh, talk show edition <laughs> live from Euro closure um, so uh, dragon right dragon like dragon Okay. Oh, sweet. That's a very, uh, very, very beautiful name, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, you, you just gave a talk yesterday about uh, the, the closure is not afraid of the GPU and, and yeah, <laughs> that was that was an amazing talk, by the way. So um, can can you give us some background on why did you start this library and you know uh, and what is your experience with closure when you did start with closure? So, uh, I've been I've been using Clojure for a long time, like since two thousand and nine, and since I work at university, it was mostly some of my like research ideas, and you need lots of flexibility, lots of freedom to experiment, to not commit to specific ar architecture or specific uh, type set or whatever. So I've been doing some exotic things in Java with, and I needed aspect J or some special specialized libraries in, let's say the beginning of two thousands, the middle of two thousands or so, but it was always like you wrestle with it for months and you're trying to create something that is, you don't have a place to look at to literature. You have your, to to find your way, but the the language the platform is great, but the language is quite rigid for some such stuff. But it worked kinda or so. But I always tried to implement some dynamical stuff and was lots of time with it. So when closure was uh, or released, so it was I think uh, the beginning of two thousand nine or so. Uh, I was regular, regularly reading like the most popular, uh, like hacker news or, or so. So I mentioned that there is increased interest in Lisp and explored that. And when closure appeared, I tried it immediately and it clicked. I will, yes, that was what I was trying to do, but in a much better that, that than I would do this. So I converted the, almost instantly and started using it exclusively. Uh, so for years, I was just using it casually. I had some ideas, uh, mostly in machine learning and some Bayesian stuff and so, but in the Java days, it was really difficult to see how to implement this in a way that you can explore, experiment with this because the area itself is a bit difficult to get into, to experiment, to, to see what works, what doesn't. And I think Clojure is a great match for that. So then um, when I needed to implement this in Clojure, it was like, okay, Clojure is flexible. Uh, I have good idea how I would implement it. I created some prototypes or so, but I realized, okay, Java is fast. But now when I really have big uh, demands for really large uh, computations or so, now it's too slow. So basically when you put on paper, what is the number of uh, iterations that you need to do? What are the numbers or so you realize your algorithm is good, flexible and nice, uh, but everything but the, but the toy problems would run in minutes, hours, weeks, months, years or whatever. So then I, I started investigating investigating about okay but there are people uh it's c plus plus and everybody heard about gpu or so there are people getting some speed increase with this stuff but how it's done and can it be done in closure there were some experimental libraries but not working they, they didn't work that well so i had to <laughs> Now you, you go down the rabbit hole, you, you fix one problem, and you, then you discover 10 other problems. So I realized that uh, the libraries that were ab available uh, at the JVM at the time, even the, the, and, uh, some excellent uh, featureful libraries are actually not what I need because they always try to satisfy the corporate Java world to be Java centric, to hide these, these high performance uh, features from the user 
like to protect him, but in, in protecting the user, they just uh, uh, take away lots of performance and lots of flexibility and add many complex layers. So if you need to debug uh, something or to, to uh, fit it to your own uh, needs, then it's really difficult. So I realized I have to provide some something. So can we pause? I, I think yeah, maybe, sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, so you're working on this Neanderthal library, and that, that is uh, that is part of your whole uncomplicated uh, umbrella. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, can can you can you tell us something about the library? What, what are your plans for the library, and and why did you start this thing? Is there is there a commercial project or something, or is there something that that is a use case that you are uh, going after? Yeah. Well, uh, so basically, uh, I have uh, some ideas uh, of how I would do, how we, I would use Bayesian uh, machine learning or data analysis commercially, or some of some of it would be open, some of it would be uh, part of some service, some some long term plans. Uh, why I needed uh, basically Neanderthal is free, open source. Uh, works really well. I have some feedback from real users who are like uh, excited. It's, it works really well from for them. Uh, and I'm uh, on this long time, so uh, I have uh, such luck or uh, to have freedom to uh, not be a startup that needs money and have some short run uh, run runway or have to provide something in two months, so they need to rush it to just work somehow, uh, but don't be really well polished or so. So I have time to dedicate to this. So I some, sometimes I have something working well, but I realize that there, there, there are some points that could be improved and I spend two or three months just to to get it really right and um, that's why I think uh, it could be really useful for a lot of people because I will certainly develop this for years so basically uh, and I also this is not the only uh, stuff I work on so basically I uh, completed the stuff that is the most important that I needed there's stuff that uh, could be implemented rel relatively quickly it's ready the infrastructure is there. Uh, the native libraries are there. Are there? Yeah, I know how to connect uh, to to it. I know how I would implement that. I didn't want to rush it because I didn't have uh, the concrete use case. So it depends on the interest of, of people. So if people, if I see that people want, okay, I really need this uh, functionality. I need for my my application, especially if they can help or uh, provide some code or yeah, or contribute some funding so we can develop something uh, that is, uh, for example, more uh, polished or more documented or whatever. So these are there are many opportunities on that. Uh, so basically, if you use this, uh, you don't have to be afraid that I will forget about it in a month. Uh, and uh, okay. can I just um, on on that subject, are you actually? Because you know, you're a professor, so are you thinking about like, are any of your PhD students or anything like that interested in in a field where they can use this kind of technology and maybe also contribute and add to it, or you know, is that the sort of thing that you're looking for, or um, you know, yeah? Well, there are some uh, PhD students uh, experiment with, experimenting with this, and some master students experimenting with this, but I. I think the point is that I don't think they at, that, at this moment they can help much because all of these people have their day jobs, so they cannot dedicate too much time to this. Uh, but yeah, of course. But the point is, I, I'm I I don't run away from coding. I actually like coding, and uh, I'm not some professor who have uh, 10 PhD students and then uh, just have some bright ideas and then uh, and then uh, just put it uh, to the workers. I do everything myself and I think that's why Neanderthal is quite uh, easy to use because I use it myself. Mm -hmm. 
so I create this for myself. So you, uh, that's why it should be easy for developers. Uh, so that's it. There, there was there was one question I was asking you before, which was about the um, like the tool chain for for all of these things. Because whenever you get into this really high performance computing stuff, um, you know when you're going bare metal and all this kind of thing. Well, actually, maybe there's another. There's two parts to that. Actually, it's like I guess we're really talking bare metal here, and that virtualization is not a great idea. Or are you kind of like on the fence about that? Obviously, Amazon runs virtualized, um, but but then if you get to that core CPU, whether it's virtualized or not, um, people have to often include native libraries and all these kind of things, which makes the tool chain a bit more tricky for standard closure developers. How, how do you how do you think that can be addressed? I cannot give a specific answer because I don't use it myself on containers. But I suppose because, um, uh, let's say, if we counting developer machines, let's forget about virtualization at start. The thing is, uh, it's, and it's one of the main uh, values that Clojure adds uh, here. It, I think it's pretty much uh, easier than using this stuff without Clojure. So for the native for the native part uh, on uh, Mac OS, for example, you just need to have your development machine, and Neanderthal will work out of the box. So you don't have to do anything special if you have development environment set up for Mac, Macintosh Macintosh programming or so. So it works out of the box as any other closure or Java library yeah. on Linux. Uh, you have two options. You either want it to be uh, optimized for your machine. In this case, you have to uh, compile uh, uh, Atlas uh, native library. It's automatic. It's not so difficult. It's a make and standard uh, C stuff. Uh, but it could be a problem for people who don't really didn't really do that. So there is documentation. The the it's clear, but. Some people might be afraid of it mm -hmm. at first, uh, but luckily, I, I think all major distributions provide Atlas as a package. So maybe it will run at 70% of speed or 90% of speed or 40% of speed, depends on how your machine is close to the their machine where they compile it. But it will still be much uh, faster than uh, Java stuff. And the point is, uh, there are lots of algorithms in native libraries. You don't even have them implemented properly in Java. So that, that's one door where we can get amazing, uh, functionality like decades of development and optimization basically for free with no overhead, with some pleasant API, with lots of, uh, functions that are that feel like closure, so you don't lose much. And there is a third part, which is actually the most awkward. It's Windows, uh, because um, uh, I don't use it. I don't use it for a long time. Yeah. Actually, I don't even use desktop. I, I use Window Manager, so, and I don't have a mouse. Uh, but uh, the point is, on Windows, it's a bit more tricky, but now it's not difficult because if you send me an email, I will show, I will send you my, uh, libatlas.dll. So it's, it's not a problem. And you, you can also build it yourself. This is the native part. So if you want to really put it on a server, I guess in virtualization or so, I guess, uh, you will see how native libraries themselves, uh, work on that. And, I suppose because all software that uses those also works on vir virtualizations, yeah. virtual machines. So I, I don't see that there could be any issue there. Maybe you, you'd need to configure something in VM or, or do some stuff, but there is documentation. People already do this. As for the Neanderthal stuff, if JVM works, it, it will probably work. The GPU stuff is a bit different because to use GPU, uh, obviously you have to have drivers for the, that GPU. So it depends on the vendor. If you use Intel, if you use uh, Nvidia or AMD, it depends on which operating system you have. 
how stable the drivers are, but pretty much it's, uh, it's useful today. So it depends on your specific case. There could be more or less some uh, need to experiment, but basically it works. It works well. It's not as stable as standard server software for CPU, obviously, because it's exotic hardware. But if, if Google uses it and don't have any problem, I suppose that it's mature enough that you can uh, create a new novel algorithms or, or so for it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. Um, I'm just thinking about talking about Google there. Um, some of the some of the stuff they're doing in terms of uh, and this this whole. Um, I, I, you tell me whether this is uh, in your in your kind of space is the the TensorFlow uh, and the OpenAI stuff. Is, is that the kind of thing which you're you're hoping to target on, on some of these activities? Well, it seems that you're you're really well prepared because you're yeah. you're. You are asking uh, the right questions that uh, I would love to answer. So, so are you? Uh, ha have you prepared for this, or, or you're just improvising uh, as well as I do? Yeah. Yeah. No, is is uh, no, no. The questions are really, really the right ones. Uh, I couldn't uh, think of better questions. The thing is. Now, as I see, I don't have any connections to Google. For, uh, I, I don't uh, know anyone uh, who, who is, uh, uh, who has some position, uh, some important position in Google. So I don't know wh what do, uh, do they actually plan or think or whatever. But why, what I can see and probably what you can see is that TensorFlow and deep learning is now uh, like the most popular machine learning stuff that 99% uh, who, of people who or looking into this stuff, they are like looking, okay, deep learning, I, I can create some uh, terminators with it or so, some kind of, uh, uh, so, some, some kind of uh, artificial intelligence that will work uh, while I'm sitting on, on the beach or lying on the beach and just uh, taking sound bath. But I don't think uh, we are close, even close to that. The thing is, yeah, uh, the thing is, uh, I, th I think Google and Facebook and Nvidia and uh, those uh, power power powerful companies, they um, now they they have uh, several user um, several use cases that work really well, like image recognition or, or so. It worked really well, and uh, mm, but mostly uh, to be successful with that, uh, you have to have lots of data and. Uh, and that's great. I, I think uh, many more use cases fit into it, fit into it, but not all use cases. So me personally, are, I'm not very interested in deep learning because uh, I think there are lots of people working on that. There will be lots of good results. There are lots of good results. It's working fine. Let's see what the hype will produce. And it's not only hype. Lots of useful real stuff is there, but. There, there are also cases, uh, especially with smaller companies with exotic use cases or so, when you don't have a, a big data, you have small data. Like you don't have 100 billion photos, but you have 100 data points about something. And Bayesian methods are actually good for that kind of problems. And not Bayesian is also quite exotic. Now lots of people are kind of interested but uh, not much uh, technical output is there. So I think with Bayesian stuff, uh, I understand this problem more, I understand the area more, uh, uh, maybe it's just my personal preference, and I also see how I can use it for some specific uh, stuff. And I hope, uh, and also the competition is much uh, weaker there. <laughs> so I hope while uh, while all other people are working on deep learning problems and big data, I'm lurking, working on Bayesian stuff and small data. So when this uh, kind of uh, application come come to you know, on the spotlight, uh, I will have uh, a lots of uh, solutions that already work, and I will be able to to provide some real value. So that that's that's some kind of general plan for for these libraries. Uh, by Adara especially.
So, um, sorry. No, I think we're pretty much done. No, that's okay. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Really good. So, um, of course, I mean, we, we are, we're going to do a full episode uh, with you and then, you know, dig deeper into all the libraries that you're building. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably, probably. Yeah, there, yeah. There, is, there is a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff going on, obviously. Um, so this is your, your first time at Euroclosure? Or uh, were you before? Or, so, oh, okay, so how, how are you enjoying Euroclosure as a, as a final question? Um, well... Um, this is my first, not only uh, Euroclosure, but uh, it's my first developers conference. Because uh, previously, uh, all the conferences that I went, all the conferences that I went to were like academic conferences, lots of people. Everyone was talking, uh, presenting their uh, work, ideas or so. Uh, but I actually, I, I actually like this way more because uh, there are not thousand talks there are only a selected uh, tens or fifteen so you can concentrate like hear what people do yeah. uh, talk with other people there is, there is uh, the atmosphere is much more focused and also relaxed yeah. so you can find people who are all already interested in the stuff that you work yeah. so you can uh, share the experience mm -hmm. and actually what is uh, interesting uh, for this uh, these exotic libraries that I presented like there were like 15 or or even more people who approached me and says oh that was interesting uh i think uh i can use it in my startup or whatever work i i do and i was trying to do this but i couldn't succeed see before i see how this could benefit me or my friends and most of those people uh didn't really know that there are other people in closure conference. For example, there was this guy who who has some company in Germany and Russia. Or so they 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 actually don't do closure or just started doing something, but they do GPU with Nvidia and so in C plus plus. So he was like, I was chilling and uh, I, he didn't he didn't look at the the, the talk list. So he he scheduled. So he didn't even know that there would be GPU stuff. So he was like, "Oh, awesome! This is the stuff that I, that I need to understand or, or so." So uh, there are lots of people who who are interested in this who are not aware that there are lots of other people in closure community that actually want uh, want to try this stuff. So it's an it's important point. You're not alone. Yes. So. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. well, thank you very much, Dragon. Um, great answers, and like V just said, it would be really good to have an extended conversation. Um, of the podcast, so that would be, be really good to have you back on there. But I think we should stop now.